<laughs> Damn right, big man's still a big man, even if he's got a small shrimp. <laughs> Damn right. Okay, so for today's catch and cook, we've kind of got on a catch and cook theme here lately. Today we're gonna to try to catch some... Prawns or shrimp. Uh, we try to Google it, but they're also called freshwater prawns and also Tahitian prawns, we've seen them called. It's just a, a big shrimp with tiny little hands that lives uh, in the freshwater rivers or around the Pacific Islands in Australia, New Zealand, and the Philippines and here in Guam. We're gonna to try to catch some today with three different methods. So I traded a 12 pack of Corona for this. This is a shrimp spear. It's made out of an old fishing pole. It's been epoxied to some welding rods. And on the other end is a piece of rubber and I have no idea where this rubber came from. Our second option is this trap. We're gonna leave this trap where we start so that when we walk back out after a few hours, hopefully this has a shrimp or, a shrimp or two or a prawn in it or two. Our third option. For shits and giggles, if we're fast enough. Yeah, is the butterfly net. I've heard if they're, if they're shallow, you know, the water's ankle deep or so, you can just nab them up in these nets. So let's see which one we catch the most with. Uh, we're gonna walk upstream here and try to find some shrimp. But before we do, we do that, we're gonna set our trap somewhere down here. Now I'm explaining here what's going on with this crab trap. I'm going to ram my filthy fist inside the loose end of it and really gape it open to show you where a shrimp would climb inside of because I think you wouldn't understand how the shrimp would climb in here unless I break it down for you like that. And so we have to open up this coconut and get some bait. Now here's the part that I wasn't sure if my local friend uh, Jacob here was lying to me or not. And he told me to load this trap up with coconut, which I didn't believe him. I figured out that he actually wasn't lying to me that you really do bait shrimp traps here with coconut, which I find fascinating. So the trap's gonna do its work for us as we walk upstream and try to do some more active hunting. So we've already found some small shrimp and we'll see if we can show you in the net here just to show you kind of what they look like. Okay, so Chris just nabbed this in the net and this is what we're after. He's missing a bigger claw, but this is the prawn. A little small. So success, most of the time we don't catch anything, so at least we caught one prawn or shrimp so far. Shrimp. You can see these. Uh, this one's a little bigger. These are good size. Since I really did a slam dunk and caught the first shrimp, uh, we're gonna give we're gonna give uh, Elizabeth a shot. So I've been relegated to butterfly net, and Elizabeth now has the dangerous weapon. How do you like? How do you do? <laughs> hey, she's doing great. Okay. How do you do? I'm uh, known for my stealth and coordination. <laughs> you need to get that on camera. What? <laughs> well, this could go really well. Yeah. It's the biggest shrimp we've seen so far. Oh, he sees me. No way. Yeah, I fucking yeah. got it! You said no way. Yeah. yeah. First try. Look at that monster. Chris says I look just like this shrimp because it's long and lanky and has awkward elbows. So this is the same type of shrimp or prawn that we caught earlier, but it's much bigger. Your hands are abnormally large, so this is not going to give most people a size of reference, but <laughs> Imagine if Michael Jordan was holding a shrimp. This is 
very similar to that. Oh, she thinks they're good. I get it! This is our makeshift portable cooler. We froze the water bottle <laughs> last night and then put it in a gallon Ziploc bag. See one? Yeah, yeah that was good. Bah! I have one skill. Animal murder? <laughs> Very aggressive for his size. I commend it. Battling up to his last moment. That's the way I'd want to go out. This is a good shot, though. Yeah. See, when you're fishing, the woman outdoes you. Drastically larger catches. You're really still the winner because... And the quality of choices, because you're still on top. Because the big man, the big man doesn't need the big shrimp. A big man, still a big man, even with a small shrimp. Damn right. The more I've kind of traveled around a little bit, the more you realize everything in the world kind of the same. This feels exactly like trout fishing in the Appalachian Mountains. You're just kind of walking up under the scrub brush, and you're just walking up the middle of a creek, and you're trying to find little bitty animals, and they're trying to get away from you, and you're trying to sneak up from behind them. This is, uh, this is eerily similar to fly fishing. It's kind of weird how everything's the same, but different, but how similar everything in the world actually is when you get into it. In this pond, there is a couple of ones that look like lobsters. We quickly have turned into sport fishermen <laughs> and are only going after the lobster looking one. This is about, what, eel number three that we've seen so far. So it's pretty decent sized freshwater eels in this river. So we caught a few, we caught a few shrimp, uh, trying to be selective on size and not just take everything that we find in the river, but really nice because it, it meets all my criteria. We walked around in the woods or the jungle, I guess you call it here, and we saw zero other people. So just, just animals and pure quiet. Now we're going to go check our trap and see if we got any big keepers in there. All right. So it looks like we caught zero shrimp. So we failed that, but we did get this little freshwater eel. Which is kind of neat to see one up close. Oh, we did get a little shrimp oh, in there. Oh, there's one. One. One shrimp. How are we going to get it out? Oh. Alrighty. So we also caught some little shrimpies for our fish. Ah. Tiny. Let's <laughs> see. He's so cute. So I caught these with my big boy net. And these look like a different species of shrimp. I'm not sure if they are or not, but they're clear. But maybe they're just juvenile versions of the same prawns that we had been catching. But these are gonna go in the bellies of our aquarium fish and they'll be our temporary pets. We will love them temporarily. This is sort of an apology for fish since we uh, murdered and filleted a, a fish in front of him in our last catch and cook video before camping. So, sorry fish. 
So after catching shrimp for all of us in the household, we are going to go back and cook them up. Let's go. Okay. Stand back. Okay. Impressive. Okay. All right. <laughs> Impressive. Right? Yeah. Okay. We are back at the house now, and before we eat, we'll let fish eat first. He's already in a fantastic mood, pouting at the bottom of the tank. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Oh, oh, oh! Okay. Well, you liked that one. Done. We're back at the house. And we've got a beer and we hope you grab one too or a tea or a coffee if you're boring like that. We have our uh, fine specimens of prawns that we caught. Mine was still the biggest though. Again, size is irrelevant in 2020 and I wish you were above that because I am. It does not bother me at all and I never think about it even a little bit. No. Moving on. So we saw on YouTube people who butterfly these, they fillet uh, the shrimp right down the middle, but we have a dull knife and no knife sharpener. And it kind of just it smushed them. it. It mushed it. Uh, I mean, it'll still work. So our plan with these shrimp is to make sushi. So let's get to cooking, which is a woman's job. Well, I need the machete. You got to use it last time, and I want to use it this time. First, learn to use this, and I'll teach you to use this. lazy with it and make it in the microwave on paper plates, which is faster and then I'm lazy and I don't like to save the grease. So when you're done, all the grease piles up on a paper plate and then you just throw the paper plate away when the grease is cooled off. All right, pop it in. Uh, we thought we would use finadini instead of wasabi with our sushi to give it a little kick, a little spice, a little flavor. Talk about packing up the taste buds for a weekend trip to Flavortown. The thing that gives it the heat and the flavor is these little bird peppers. Um, there's these really small little peppers and they're really hot. I've heard that they call them bird peppers because only a bird will eat them because a bird doesn't have any taste buds and doesn't taste the heat. Mm -hmm. I've also heard that they're called bird peppers because they grow all over Guam. Because when a bird eats the seeds, it flies all over the island and, and Poops. Um, shits these out out of the cloaca and so these come out of the cloaca from the sky and into the dirt and they're found all over the island anyway um you just crush if you have a mortar and pestle that's way cooler but we just have a spoon and a plastic cutting board is if you crush the pepper first and it opens up all those capsaicin juices out of the seeds on the inside of the peppers which makes it makes it hot so we're going to put like five of these in because I, I like it to kick a little bit he's going to kill me And then you put a little vinegar in and some soy sauce. And then cut up some onions, whatever kind of onions I have. Some people use red onions. I don't like red onions because I can taste it for almost a week. Uh, after I've cooked something with red onions, I don't like that flavor in my mouth. But you can use red onions, these sweet onions, Vidalia kind of onions, or uh, chives. How much? More, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And a squirt of here. And a squirt of... What was that last part? That last part, I think everything you do in life, you should include some of you in it. And that that last part was me including some of myself in it. So that's our finadini. That's what we'll be having with... Our sushi! Our bacon uh, 
It smells almost done in the microwave. It is. It's been in there for 12 minutes. Oh I put that God. long time on there as a joke, but it actually kind of needs it because our microwave is very underpowered and that was a whole slab of bacon. Okay, so we burnt the bacon, um, but as you've seen on our prior cooking channels, we have become experts at peeling the burnt parts off of things. So first thing we have to do now that our shrimp are cooked is to shell them. We sure do. So we're going to go ahead and get to work. Oh, me is a we. That. The thing that went up past my wrist turned into that. All right, we've got our nori here. I am like 40% sure that it's shiny side down on sushi paper. You are 100% right. So you have to use short grain rice. We tried doing this with uh, long, grain, long grain rice and it just kind of falls apart. We're using uh, just a plain Greek yogurt. Which tastes more like sour cream. Like a Swiss roll. Yeah, just like a Swiss oh. roll. Okay, I like this style. I think people will know that we don't roll blunts. Yeah, we do not roll blunts. <laughs> but you can see now how that sticky rice actually does stick it and weld it together. Our knife is very dull. We didn't forget the bacon. We got the bacon right here. We got our bacon bricks right here. We can just crumble it on top. All right, so now for real this time with the bacon, because we're not idiots and uh, we remember. Definitely, so. yeah, definitely. Mmm. 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 You can definitely hear the bacon. Mmm. This good though. That tastes like sushi with bacon. It's better. It's good. It's more delicious. American, you know? Mm -hmm. Feels better with the beer. Yeah, that's absolutely delicious. So again, thank you for hanging out with us as we went and tried to get some shrimp. We were successful. One of the rare times we were ever successful in anything. Things went as planned, actually, which is kind of nice. It is. And if you have any ideas for any videos in the future, please drop them in the comment section. So we're always looking for some fun new idea of something. If you, if you can tell if you do watch this channel, it's not ever the same thing every week. We all like doing different things and being creative and doing something different. So if you've got a fun idea of something for us to film a video about, go ahead and drop it in the comment section. We'd love to hear it and maybe we'll do it and give you a shout out. Hugs and kisses, we miss you. Stay safe, unless you don't want to be safe, then you be as unsafe as you possibly can. It's pretty good though, it's like a bacon cracker.